quick revision video on the reactions of alcohols. So we'll start with the combustion reaction. Alcohols combust completely in a plentiful supply of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So a couple of examples, the first one's ethanol. So there's the unbalanced equation. I'm going to do the carbons first, so we need two carbon dioxides. Now I'm going to do the hydrogens, so we're going to need three waters. And then I go back and do the oxygens, but remember there's an oxygen in the alcohol. It's quite often students forget about that one. So altogether we've got four plus three, seven oxygens. There's one there, so we need another six, so it's three or twos. Second example is pent and one all. So again, there's the unbalanced equation. So we're going to need five CO2s, six H2Os, and this time I'm going to use a top heavy fraction to balance the oxygens. So we've got a total of 10 plus 6, 16 um, oxygens on the right. So we've got one in the alcohol, so we need 15 more from the O2. So it's 15 over 2 O2s. Next reaction is dehydration. So dehydration involves the removal of water. So to dehydrate alcohols, they're heated under reflux. I've got a picture of what that looks like in a second. In the presence of an acid catalyst, and you can use either concentrated phosphoric acid, H3PO4, or H2SO4, sulfuric acid. The products of the reaction are an alkene and water, and the reaction is known as an elimination reaction because obviously water is eliminated from the um, original molecule. So there's your picture for the reflux apparatus. We're going to heat the um, alcohol and the dehydrating agent, so the acid catalyst, in there. And a vertical condenser gives us the reflux condition. So basically, the um, product will start to vaporize, travel up the condenser, but because of the cold water running around the outside, it condenses back inside and it never leaves out of the top. So the first example we'll look at is butanol. Displayed formula is the best for this type of reaction or to explain it anyway. So we need to remove a water molecule, so we need an OH and an H. Obviously there's the OH. And the rule is take the H, the single H, from the adjacent carbon. So obviously it's either that one or that one, both going to give us the same product. And where the uh, groups have been removed, we form a double bond. So if we take that H there, we get the water molecule and the alkene produced with the double bond there is obviously going to be butanoin. If we change the alcohol now to butan-2-ol, so there it is there, take the OH. If we take the end H, we're going to get butanoin. But we can also, there's another adjacent carbon, there's that one there, so we're going to get butanoin. So there's more than one possible product. And then the other thing to bear in mind is when you get butuene, it's possible to get EZ isomers as well. So my top tip is whenever you make an alkene in a reaction, always ask yourself, can it show EZ isomerism? So butuene can't because of the identical atom on this carbon of the double bond. So there's no difference if you swap them round. So if we move on to substitution now, when alcohols react with hydrogen halides, so for example, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, you get a substitution reaction where the halogen atom from the hydrogen halide substitutes with the OH group from the alcohol. The products are halogenoalkane. The reaction is carried out by heating the alcohol under reflux with sulfuric acid and a sodium halide. So sodium chloride, sodium bromide, for example. The reaction between the sulfuric acid and the sodium halide makes the hydrogen halide. We call that in situ, so in that place and that then goes and reacts with the alcohol. So for example, the reaction of propanol with sulfuric acid and sodium bromide under reflux, first thing that happens is we're going to get the hydrogen halide produced, and notice we get sodium hydrogen sulfate as well. And then the second reaction, this hydrogen halide is going to react with the alcohol, and we literally just substitute the OH for the Br. So we're making one bromopropane in this case. The final reaction is the oxidation reaction. There's a few slides on this because there's a few possibilities depending on what type of alcohol you've got and what conditions you use. So we'll just go through the general information first. 
Primary and secondary alcohols can be oxidized by heating with an oxidizing agent. And the symbol we use in the equations is the O, capital O in square brackets. Most common oxidizing agent is a solution of acidified potassium dichromate 6. So formula wise, K2CR2O7 and it's sulfuric acid that pro provides the acid conditions. In the reaction, the dichromate 6 ions, so it's these ions here, which are part of the potassium dichromate, they reduce to chromium 3 ions, Cr3 plus, and you get a colour change of orange to green. Now you can use other dichromates, it doesn't have to be potassium dichromate, so you could use sodium dichromate and so on. And finally on this slide, tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidised. So we'll start with the oxidation of primary alcohols. This is the first slide I've got for this. So these can be oxidized either to an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid. The product depends on the method of heating, so you can either use distillation or reflux. We'll start with distillation. So when primary alcohols are heated with the oxidizing agent under distillation, the aldehyde distills out of the reaction mixture. So because the condenser is set like this, as soon as the aldehyde is produced, it will vaporize, it's very hot in here, vaporizes, travels down here, and it will condense because of the cold water running around the outside, and drops into this flask here. So that prevents it from being oxidized to a carboxylic acid, because essentially you're taking it away from the oxidizing agent. So the example I've got here is propanol, oxidation of propanol under distillation, and there's the equation for that, and you'll notice that I've got the flask to change to green. So propanol is oxidized to propanol. And if you wanted to see the other forms of that equation, there they are there. So there's your displayed formula, and there's your skeletal formula. If we look at the other type of heating, so this is going to be reflux. So now we've got the condenser in the vertical position. So when primary alcohols are heated with the oxidizing agent under reflux, the aldehyde remains in the reaction mixture. So it's going to do the same thing as before. It'll vaporize, but it'll travel up here. But before it gets to the top, it's going to condense and drop back into the flask where you've got more oxidizing agent. So that's going to cause it to be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. So we'll use the same one again, propanol, but this time it's oxidized under reflux. So the first oxidation is going to be taking it to the aldehyde, same as before. So you notice this has now gone green. The second oxidation is we're going to turn this aldehyde into the carboxylic acid, and there's the equation for that. So notice we've, we've got two oxidations taking place. The water molecule is only produced in the first oxidation. So overall, that equation would look like this. So two moles of oxidizing agent gets us to the carboxylic acid, but remember one water molecule, it's only produced in the first oxidation reaction. So propanol is oxidized under reflux to propanoic acid. So again, there's all the different forms of the equation. So finally, we're looking at the oxidation of secondary alcohols. Remember, tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized, so I haven't got a slide for that. So when secondary alcohols are heated with the oxidizing agent under distillation or reflux, it doesn't matter which uh, method you use, the product is a ketone. Reflux would typically be used because that would ensure that all of the alcohol is reacted. So again, we've got this diagram, and the equation would look like that. So we've gone from propan 2 all to propanone. So this ketone can't be oxidized anymore, so the reaction finishes with that. And there's all the different types of equation for that one.